In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I'm about to show you how to burn wood with the help of a Cricut. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is crafty.net and this is also our Christmas in July week. So it's going on over here on the, on the crafty.net YouTube channel as well as over on the Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel. All of the videos will be listed and linked down below. So be sure to check those out. But for today, y'all, we are actually doing a, a remake of one of my most popular videos. Actually scratch that. It is the most popular video on my YouTube channel. It was done a couple Christmases ago where I actually burned a design into, into an actual cutting board from Ikea and it currently has over 1 million views. But I have recently found a somewhat easier way to go about that entire process and I wanna share that with you all today over here on this channel. So first things first, we will need a cutting board and I am using this one right here from Ikea. Same exact one I used before. We will also need some other ingredients, we shall say, for an actual wood burning mixture. So for that, we'll be using some thicket. This is actually like a food thickener, and that is actually gonna help out from actually having our solution leak down and bleed onto our wood cutting board. We will also need some ammonium chloride. So this stuff right here, now this is actually a version for pets. I don't think it's any different though from what is normally used as an ingredient sometimes in some types of candies anyway. Overall, a very, very safe ingredient, but we will also need a design. And for that, we are heading over to crafty.net because y'all, crafty.net is like the way to save so much money with your crafting. Literally, you get access to everything on the site, unlimited downloads, unlimited access, to currently over 18,000 files at the time of recording this. That includes fonts, SVG files, sublimation files, laser files, embroidery files, like you name it. Like there's so much goodness and you get access to all of it unlimited for less than 10 bucks a month. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> so good. So let me come over here and we will be using this little Dear Santa, little Santa snack tray or Santa cookie tray, whatever you want to call it for Christmas in July. So let's make sure that the SVG, like the SVG file version is selected and they can do a one click download like so. Then let's go ahead and hop over here to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see, I do have this already uploaded into Cricut Design Space. If you're not entirely sure how to do that, I got a full playlist showing you exactly how to do that on multiple devices down below. But for this, let's go in here and actually make a, a guide or a template for our actual cutting board. So let me come over here, click on shapes, open up a square, and then let's come up here and change this operation from a basic cut to a guide. Now we need the actual measurements of our cutting board. Now, I don't wanna go past the little, little cutout in the cutting board right here. So this is really very subjective to whatever you wanna do, but I have already measured this. So let's come over here and basically make sure our guide is selected make sure that the little padlock is unlocked. And so for the width, let's put in here 15. And for the height, let's put in here 10.5. We can go ahead and right click our guide, click on send it back, and then we can go ahead and grab our design and then more accurately, I guess, resize this to fit onto the cutting board. However, I am also wanting to go in here and make sure that we have a name to fill in the blank here. So let me go in here and put in my nephew's name, which is Hayden. So let me come over here, click on text, type in here, Hayden. Let's go ahead and uh, just zhuzh that up a little bit with a crafty.net font. So let's come up here, click on font. And then I'm currently gonna use my favorite crafty.net font, which is sketchy and switch it over to that. And let's go ahead and click on our actual design, hold down the shift key, click on our name, and then come down here and click on weld. So that is now all one single solid image. And let's go ahead and come up here and click on make it. Now we wouldn't need to mirror this or do anything like that. We would just go ahead and cut it out exactly how it is here on the screen. However, with the size that I have mine, you will need a 12 inch by 24 inch mat if you wanna have it to be the same size. However, I have already cut this all out, like as you can see right here. Now, basically, the whole process with this is gonna be somewhat reversed when it comes to weeding it. So what we would normally weed and remove 
we will actually leave behind. What we're going to do is actually go in here and create a stencil. So to create that stencil, we'll just need to like basically just remove the actual design part itself. All right, so everything is all weeded out as you can see. So what we'll need to do now is use some transfer tape to apply it over to our cutting board. So I am using the Style Tech Clear Medium Tech transfer tape. And right now the sticky side of the transfer tape is sticking up towards me. So let me go ahead and grab our design and place it face first down onto the sticky side of that transfer tape. And then I'm gonna go in here and start peeling off the backing paper of that vinyl. And let's just go ahead and place this down onto the cutting board. Once you have it where you want it, go ahead and start squeegeeing it all out. And then once you have that applied down to the cutting board, grab a corner of the transfer tape and start very slowly peeling back at a sharp angle on the corner of the transfer tape. Just making sure that none of that vinyl is peeling up with the transfer tape. All right, so this is all good and ready to go as our stencil. So what we'll need now is actually our wood burning solution. So let me grab that real quick. All right, so for the thicket, I am putting in here eight teaspoons. And again, the thicket is basically just used as a thickening agent so that the actual ammonium chloride, which is the actual wood burning component to all of this, isn't gonna leak up in underneath of that stencil. Now also people have asked a lot, what about like this torch pen or scorch marker or whatever it's called, or like the torch paste? The thing is, I'm not a fan of either. I have tried them. I, I just really love how with this like little recipe, you can really scale it to be as big of a recipe or as small, just by dividing or multiplying the components of the recipe. And plus you can go in here and make it as thick or as thin as you want. Huge fan of that. Uh, for the ammonium chloride, I'm gonna put in here one tablespoon or like three teaspoons of that. And then I'm just gonna mix in half a cup of warm water. Now again, you can make this recipe as big or as small as you want. You can divide this down or multiply if you need to. Also, so many people have asked, can you actually save this solution? And you can. I've actually saved mine for up to a couple months. Just put it like in a Tupperware container, keep it sealed. I even pop mine like in the refrigerator. And if it becomes like a little dried out, just mix in a little bit more of like distilled water and with that and you should be good. But once you're all done, it should have like this really thick consistency where you almost have to like shake it off of the brush if you get like a little bit on there. Now, as far as applying this to our board goes, you really want to apply a very small amount, like really go in here, even shake some or like scrape some off of the brush itself and then start applying it. You do not need a ton of this. Let me, let me reiterate that. You do not need a lot of this. The more you put on here, like the thicker you put it on, the more likely it is to actually bleed up under the stencil. Also, if you are working with like a rougher piece of wood, be sure to really sand down your piece of wood until it's nice and smooth to the touch before doing any of this. This is also food safe, so a lot of people have asked that as well. This is food safe as long as the board it's being applied to is food safe. You have to take into account that if you're putting on a stain or a paint or whatever, some of that stuff is probably not food safe, if any of it. Also, this mixture has got to come in direct contact with the actual wood fibers itself. It can't be put on top of paint or a sealant or anything like that. It will work with the stain, but again, with the stain, it may not be food safe. Just be sure to do your own research when it comes to all of this. All right, so I have given this some time to dry. It can take up to like 30, 40 minutes or so or you could go ahead and speed it up like I did with this, just like a hair dryer. But let me go in here and start peeling up the stencil and being very careful not to actually peel up any of the film that's on our actual design. All right, so I just dusted off any of the little flakes of that, of that film from the ammonium chloride solution. I just kind of dusted that off the top, anything that basically had settled or dried on top of the vinyl itself. I mean, now we are left with just our design. However, can't really see much of any of that 
if at all, on camera anyway. However, he kind of hooked up to the light, you can kind of see a very faint outline of where the actual ammonium chloride solution is. And what we're going to do now is go in here and heat this to the point that it causes a chemical reaction with the wood and actually chemically burns or etches like the wood, which is so freaking cool. Now, I will say this, in the past, we have just used like a heat gun and it works great. It just takes a really, really long time. However, I was recently playing around with my new toy, this little blowtorch right here. Now, it does not need to be this big or excessive whatsoever. A little small kitchen torch will do the job just fine. But basically, I'm like, I wonder if we can kind of speed up this whole process with just a blowtorch. And y'all, it worked amazingly well. So let me show y'all how. Now, it's always better to be safe than sorry. I always recommend using some PPE, some personal protective equipment. And I honestly recommend doing this outside or in a very, very, very well ventilated area. But basically, I'm just gonna take the torch to this, move the torch as quickly as possible across the actual design until it actually starts to burn the design into the wood. And if you get your blowtorch a little too close for a little too long onto your board like I did in some spots, don't worry about it. You can go in there with like a magic eraser and that will honestly do some wonders. You can also obviously kind of sand down those areas as well. Hey, real quick, if you are new around here to this channel and you also want to learn how to best use your Cricut, definitely consider stamping that subscribe button. Also consider ringing that little bell for all the notifications. And hey, if you liked the video, maybe you learned something new, consider stamping that like button and dropping a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching y'all. We love you to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.